What's up, dangerous dungeon dwellers? It is Thursday. It is 10 o'clock in the morning, about 10.30 actually here in Ventura, California. It's the 10th day of March 2022. It is 60 degrees and sunny here in Ventura, California, but I have a piercing migraine because such is my life. And it's Mega Dungeon March. Probably, uh, yeah. I think we're done talking about Dunge Mega Dungeons today because tomorrow, I mean, next week we're going to talk about the other half of Mega Dungeon, which is Mega Power March, where we're going to talk about superheroes. But really, we cannot talk about Mega Dungeons or Dungeons in general and Dungeon Design without talking about the mother of Dungeon Design. Uh, try and pronounce this name with me. Janelle Jaquais. Janelle J-A-Q-U-A-Y-S. Uh, who was born Paul Jaquais, is an American game designer, video game artist, and illustrator of tabletop role-playing games. His, his her notable works includes Dungeons & Dragons modules, Dark Tower, and Cowards of Thacia for the Judges Guild, the development and design and conversions of games such as Pac-Man and Donkey Kong for Coleco's home video arcade system, and more recent design work including the Age of Empire series for Quake and Quake 2. Some of their best-known work is for doing Dragon Magazine adventure um uh covers uh so obviously paul slash janelle um has transitioned uh that so yeah but we're not gonna talk about that but okay so uh this individual is the person who said memorable game maps springs from a meddling of design and intent and fortunate accidents and has designed maps for like Caverns of Thacia, which is considered one of the best, you know, mega dungeons. Dark Tower, Griffin Ma Mountain, uh, a ton of stuff for Judges Guild, Chaosium, Flying Buffalo, and TSR before transitioning over into video game wise, where she, he, she, it designed games for um, Halo Wars. Uh, this individual, J Janelle, Paul, whatever you want to call him, her. Uh, is noticed for non-linear dungeon design, which, of course, is huge, huge, huge uh, in Mega Dungeon Design. I don't think we would have Mega Dungeon Design for D&D without Caverns of Thracia and without the work this individual has done, especially just the I'm just going to draw something and see what happens style. I mean, definitely, you know, yeah. Uh, for example, in Thracia... They included three separate entrances to the first level of the dungeon. Um, from level one of the dungeon, you will find two conventional paths with no less than eight unconventional or secret paths leading down to the lower levels. It, the style leads to a fantastically complex and dynamic environment. You could literally run dozens of groups through her modules, his modules, and every one of them will have a fresh and unique experience. Uh... It's not just random chance that uh, exper that allows her developments. It's their, you know, just like I said, the meddling of design intent and fortune accidents. So again, you really cannot have um, dungeon complex ideas uh, kind of without, you know, what this individual has done. Now, if you want to compare it to more modern stuff, let's look at some of the recent Wizards of the Coast stuff. Extremely linear dungeons. You have an entrance. You have a couple of rooms and then maybe a side path, but then you have the final encounter. True, linear is easier to run, you know, A, B, C, but Mega Dungeons and Jaquais style, or Jaquais, J-A-Q-U-A-Y-S, God, I'm going to pronounce your name and I'm sorry, Janelle. Uh, so, yeah, um, linear is easier, obviously, but I think Mega Dungeons can be linear and it can still tell a story. We've talked about that before, just with dungeon design, especially with mega dungeon design, it's not going to be linear. It's going to be just this hodgepodge mashup. And you can't, you know, it's just this Jaquais style of just here's level one, here's level three, here's level two, here's a road to level one, here's a road to level three, here's an elevator to level two, here's a side passage, here's a whole separate dungeon that's just kind of connected, here's a demiplane. I mean, sure, just this, this, this random, but meaningful randomness of these maps is truly the heart of mega dungeons so really you, you know 
It gives the players more choices. It tells more stories. It gives a repeat repeatability. You know, like it's like they say here in this article, you could run through the same module adventure multiple times because it's this style of map. You could, you know, never see the same place twice. You could have twists and turns and curves and hundreds of stories going on and then completely keep returning to the same place. Um, so this is this philosophy of just um, non-Euclidean, nonsensical dungeon design that just goes so well with the theme of mega dungeons. I don't think you could have what we see today as a mega dungeon or even well-written dungeons without this influence of this individual. Uh, last we checked, they are alive and well and living in Seattle with their wife, Rebecca. So please, uh, Janelle, continue to make wonderful maps. And thank you very much for giving us the heart and soul of Mega Dungeons. I don't think we would have Mega Dungeons without your stuff. So if you haven't had a chance to check out their work, Caverns of Thracia is available still. Uh, and I think it's been converted to both 3.5 and 5. Uh, obviously, some, a lot of the video games they designed are still available out there. A lot of the Judges Guild stuff that they designed you can find online. Uh, if you appreciate Mega Dungeon March, let me know. If you have a favorite Mega Dungeon, comment down below. If there's a Mega Dungeon you want me to look at that I haven't looked at yet, let me know. Comment down below. Uh, if talking about somebody who's transitioned from male to female upsets you, I apologize, uh, but it's a part of this individual's life and work and art, and they, you know, can deserve to identify as whatever they want. Uh, they've made adult choices, and it's really not my place to talk about that. Uh, yeah, so there we go. That brings Mega Dungeon March to an end. Tune in next time when we'll have more news, weather, sports, and nonsense. And next week, it's superheroes, which means I will take a look again at G Core and the Protectors universe. And hey, did you see Jeff D himself reached out to me? So thank you. Shout out to Jeff D. Woo, the father of VNV, &V, my second favorite or maybe favorite superhero role playing game. Definitely most of my superhero memories are villains of vigilantes. So yeah, thanks, Jeff, for reaching out. I appreciate it. Till next time. I'm your guy, John the Tabletop, role-playing news, rules, weather, sports, and general internet nonsense, asking you, please support me, and please subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet, and I will talk to you all later. Till then, get out of my mega dungeon, you damn kids, with your damn bear.